This team has me juiced up for a damn media day. A media day. They're not even on the court playing basketball yet, and I'm freaking the hell out. I have goosebumps. My hairs are sticking up because I love this damn team so much. I can't wait. I can't wait to see them actually go out there and just shoot during training camp, all right? I can't believe how much this team gets me going. I know why you're actually here. You just want free money. Well, good thing is, I can give that to you. Use the promo code BRODES at SeatGeek's checkout, and you will get a free $20. Make sure you get yourself to a game now. What is going on, everyone? This was just a day where the players talked to media members. Like, that's it. But there's so much to talk about. There's so much noise surrounding Ben Simmons specifically. Yes, other players, but Ben Simmons specifically because we all know that he needs to take the next step. We know that he needs to add to his game to take this team to the next level. And I love, I absolutely love everything I've heard out of Ben Simmons so far. Now listen, he was this kid who was kind of cocky, right? He gave one-word answers to the media. It seems as if all of that has changed. I mean, this year, coming into media day, there's a different vibe coming off of him. Positive, confident, understanding how much dedication that he put into his game this offseason, where he doesn't care if he misses a couple shots. He doesn't care what people say. See, that article that came out over the last couple days of him finding the love for the game again, it's so important. I can't believe there are people staring down at the negative. Actually, I can believe it because that's society these days. But there are people that stare at the negative and are disgusted because he lost the love for the game. No, no. When I've talked about this before, think about the positive. Because he found it again, we are going to see something completely different. Now, let's take a listen to this clip that I heard and it put a smile on my face. Reason, if he could take us and give us a little insight as to why you worked last summer on a jump shot, and we never saw a perimeter game from you during the season last year. I think the difference with this summer and last summer was I got into a, a place where I was working, but it wasn't on the same level. Um, and I think this summer has been completely different to where, you know, I just don't care. I'm going to work. I'm going to miss shots. I'll probably airball a few or whatever. It's going to happen. Um, but I'm also going to make shots. Um, and at the end of the day, that's how you get better. Because if everybody was perfect, then we'd have... A lot more hundreds of yeah. uh, tons of banners <laughs> right. or whatever it is. So um, no one's perfect. No one player is perfect. Um, you now I was able to be an all-star without that aspect of my game last season. And just adding that is a scary thing. So is it just trying to analyze what you said there? Is, was it as simple as you felt last year? It wasn't, the confidence level wasn't where it needed yeah, I'm to be taken. I'm, I'm confident now. Um, and it's not just about confident shooting the ball. It's just a confident player. I'm not worried about what people are going to say. So is there is there a goal or is there a number in terms of, let's just talk three points. My shots. goal is to hang a banner up there. Right. It's not, I'm not trying to shoot as many, uh, take a certain amount of threes or whatever it is I'm going to take what the game gives me. What about the free throw shooting? Yeah. How much have you worked on that aspect of your game? All summer. All summer. And, and what did you find? Was it mechanical? Was it above the shoulders? It's, rep it's repetition. Uh, repping the right way and doing the right things and, and finding a place where you feel comfortable. Now. I love that. Are you kidding me? Can't you see the difference? I mean, really. Can't you see that there is something different about Ben Simmons this year? I've stated this before. I understand that it's a lot easier to say these things now before anything has happened and before the pressure is on and before you're actually on the spotlight. I know it's easy to say the things now, but it's good that he has this mindset. To me, it seems like he has completely blocked out all the noise. He doesn't care whatsoever what people think anymore. And as easy as it is to say, well, you shouldn't care anyway, that's not how it works when you're in the spotlight and you've grown up a superstar. This kid has grown up this elite superstar and he's been in the spotlight for his entire life. This is just how it's always been. Everything has been shined on him for so long that he hasn't really faced this much criticism before. He's adjusting as a human being. 
But the way he talks about shooting the ball, he even hit us with a quote, if it's open, I'll take it. In terms of knocking down shots, like, this is incredible. And it's so fascinating. I just, I can't wait to see it actually happen. I can't wait to see some action. Even if it's just training camp action, I can't wait to see it. Because you're going to start seeing blood, sweat, and tears getting poured Pouring onto the court there at, at Camden, New Jersey in the training facility within the next couple days. And that gets me pumped up. I can't wait. He claims he's focused on the championship over individual statistics and individual awards. Unless it's Defensive Player of the Year. I love that. <laughs> I mean, what don't I love so far in this video? Are you kidding me? We also have Joel Embiid discussing Defensive Player of the Year. We have players on our team fighting to be the best defender in the league. We're talking about basketball, the sport where everyone claims and everyone criticizes because there's no defense in this game. There's no defense in this league. There's no defense in the NBA. We have competitors on our team competing to be the best defenders. Not only that, you have someone like Tobias. Tobias Harris, who isn't really known to be a great elite defender, who wants to work on his game to a crazy degree, so he is known as a great defender. I mean, this is beautiful stuff. Josh Richardson, good defender. Al Horford, we know what he brings to the table. We saw him stop and beat for the last few years. He's a great defender. I mean, this is nuts. Nuts to have this type of culture defensively. The pride, the joy of taking defense seriously and then you of course have James Ennis Matisse Thibel talking about how he is going to be a 3 and D guy how he wants to take pride in that defense I hear Smith someone who is now 207 pounds talk about adversity talk about hard times with what happened last year we're getting sick almost actually losing his life because of his sickness battling back finding a way to get on the court last year for some time which is just mind-blowing The defensive mindset for this team is one of a kind. You don't see it. You just don't see it. So I love the fact that Ben Simmons comes out and, and states, you know, I, I want to focus on a title unless it's Defensive Player of the Year, right? And that, that's great to me. That's great to me. We know that Ben Simmons is very controversial, not just here in Philadelphia, but in the sport of basketball. I see something different this year. I know you want to bash on videos in the summer because that doesn't mean anything. No one's really playing. Who cares if they're NBA talented guys? They're not playing. It's just the summer. It's 5-on-5. Five five. Sure, I get that argument. I still put some stock into it, but I get that argument. He was taking fadeaway jumpers. Like To me, you got to be confident to do that, but whatever. I digress. Now I'm seeing him speak to the media, and I've heard him speak to the media for years now in Philadelphia. I've never seen it like this. I've never seen his attitude like this. It puts a smile on my face. And the juice that I had for this team just went up and multiplied by 65,000. Is that even possible? No. And it just happened. Now let's move on to Joel Embiid. <laughs> he mentioned that he has a good relationship with Elton Brand. Unlike other GMs here. <laughs> Brian Colangelo maybe. <laughs> what a tool he was. What a tool he was. But of course, Joel Embiid brings his personality to the table. He was talking about how he's not going to be talking trash anymore. And then he kind of thrown out there, let's see how long that goes. And of course, he brings his personality to the table. But he wants the first seed, which of course we all do. And, and Brett Brown was even speaking about that during his little coach's day there with beat reporters a couple days ago. He wants 60 plus wins. He wants defensive player of the year. He wants the MVP and he wants a championship listing the things he wants to do this season. See, to me, I don't really care about the MVP. The MVP is a garbage thing. Now, I I've, I like the fact that Joe B wants to fight for that. If that puts him in a mindset where he has this extra dog mentality, then sure. But at the end of the day, who cares? Giannis wins it. Russell Westbrook wins it. James Harden wins it. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't correlate to championships. I want to win championships. Of course, it's cool. I'm not going to take it away if a 76er won the MVP. Like, it's cool. But I don't care about it. I like that he's using that as motivation. But to me, the MVP doesn't really mean anything. 60-plus wins, that would be a lot. I don't know if I see that happening. And also, to be an MVP, you got to play a lot of games. 
I firmly do believe that the Philadelphia 76ers are going to use the Kawhi Leonard mentality with last year with Joel Embiid. You're not going to see him getting abused in October, November, December, back-to-back games. No, no, you're not going to see it happen. So it's hard to win the MVP when you don't play as much as other players. Al Horford was praising the hell out of Embiid. Talking about how he thinks he's the best in the game at that position. Saying it's a blessing to play next to a guy like that. To be a teammate with a guy who's this talented. And Bede is going to learn so much from Al Horford. Not just in the post. Not just on the court. How to, how to really put your body in a great position off the court. And the eating habits. Staying in shape. He talks about Joel Embiid. Talked about how he, he lost a lot of... A lot of weight this year, but put on some muscle. He looks great. I mean, there's pictures all over the place of the starting five. (laughs) Come on. I mean, they look so good. They look so good. I can't wait for my jerseys to come in. I really can't. You got Josh Richardson out there, too. Looking smooth. We don't really even talk about Josh Richardson that much. And I think we will, obviously, as the season gets going here. And once we see his defense and once we see his ability to defend the primary ball handler like Coach Brett Brown spoke about. So once we start seeing his game in the Philadelphia 76ers system, we will talk about him a lot more. Because you will see a big difference in J.J. Redick and Josh Richardson. Now, I remember when the J.J. Redick thing happened... I don't think people realize how much we lost in terms of J.J. Redick's shooting ability. That's not a knock on Josh Richardson. What that is is praise on J.J. Redick and how elite he really is at shooting the ball. But you take away some of the three-point shooting and add a layer of defense. But I'm interested to see how it fits out in this scheme. One thing I'm not looking forward to, honestly, is, is the Brett Brown haters. I've already seen them already. They've already came out. You know, this is this is it. I mean, this is it. This is the year for him to have a full-on roster and, and to make it happen. But he's not Gabe Kapler. He's not Dave Hackstall. All right? He's not Chip Kelly. But he gets that type of, of hate because we didn't win a title with a flawed roster last year. We had a good starting five. You need a little bit deeper than that. And when you play the best talent in the NBA, the best talent wins. We did not have a Kawhi Leonard. We had a 22-year-old Ben Simmons. We had a Joel Embiid that is still immature in terms of a professional. Like, I've mentioned this so many times. When you win in the NBA, you are a grown man. It's a grown man's league. We are going to take a step in the right direction this year, yes. But this is a grown man's league. Take a look over the last few, not few, take a look over years and years of championships in this league. Who wins? Veterans and the best veterans at the end of the day. Sure, there are some upsets in there where Dirk ends up beating LeBron James. Sure. This is a grown man's league. And I don't like the Brett Brown hate. But I think you'll see something totally different this season. Because you have different personnel. You have different assistant coaches. You take J.J. Redick out. Well, guess what? You end up not dribble handoffs. You end up not having too many dribble handoffs. So I expect that to change. And realistically, with Ben Simmons being able to shoot a basketball. And I'm putting that in there because I believe he can. It changes everything. Everything. Ben Simmons last year was sitting on on the perimeter, not being defended by defenders because no one trusted he can shoot. No one knew he can shoot. No one respected him. And that changes everything you do as a coach. You can only do so much when your star can't shoot. But anyway, I'm not trying to get into that debate right now, even though I just kind of did. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.